Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. What time is it? Late. It's like oh, two o'clock. I, can I go to bed? Sure. Oh, oh, I didn't think I... I don't think I can do this. Fine. Please. But, but you're going to miss it. Dude, dude. Why, why, why do we do this so late? Anyway, uh, what do you work on today? Uh, in Diomanso, right? Uh, group ask for that, no? That's correct. Uh, you're gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Say, say hi, say hi from me to everybody. I miss, I miss everybody. Uh, all right. Today we work on poema. <laughs> Why? Because it's beautiful. Poema is beautiful. I, I can imagine some of you are rolling your eyes. Not again. Poema? Really? Yeah, poema. Uh, it's not even a proper Argentinian song. Um, it's more like a uh, made in Europe kind of thing and um, but we happen to be in the middle of it so let's just do it um, of course there are uh, very interesting articles about poema you should check out uh, on Wikipedia and then read those articles if you want to you know improve that part of the story but I am more interested in sharing with you from the dancers perspective how to dance to poema it will be a good addition to our work, which work, the form of music. The fact that Poema is one of the most popular, one of the most played songs is actually going to help us because that indeed means you know the song really well. Um, or you maybe actually like the song very much, maybe more than I do or at least at one point you liked it very much or maybe you hate the song and then you've been waiting for someone to come and change your mind I'll try my best I should make sure to compose my video here well so I'm gonna follow the rule start with the large and then go into the details if you remember the form one of the uh, series was talking about the largest picture of the music which was the DJ's playlist in Milongas and then form 2 video worked on the second largest that is the tandas and inside the tanda now we're looking at the song that's the form 3 today and inside the form of course we can go into the smaller sections the paragraphs and the sentences and phrases and the words and all the details, the grammatic parts with the commas and periods and what happens at the end of the phrase and what happens between two phrases. I look forward to getting into all that with you. But um, I should make a short disclaimer. Uh, just like uh, when you see something for the first time, it's maybe safer to look at it from a distance. And if it's something complicated, uh, it's a good idea to squint your eyes a little bit. This is what we do to the artworks uh, because there's so much going on there and it's a safe idea to look at it as a large image instead of getting lost in details right away. Guess what? We could do that towards music. We could squint our ears. This is a skill that I highly recommend you to start investing in because it is really a differentiating factor between an experienced dancer and not as experienced dancer. Uh, dancers who have been uh, dancing for a long time and listening to music are expectedly to be more musical dancers. Um, obviously a 10 year old dancer will be a better dancer than a one-year-old dancer because as you know in the very beginning it also happened to you all these tango songs sounds very similar to each other this is not something specific for 
uh, tango music listening. This also happened to us towards people uh, that we didn't grow up seeing around. Even when you buy a new car, you think it's a rare car, but the following day in traffic you will notice many other people actually have this car. So this happens to us for uh, tango music too. Um, and as a beginner, most likely you catch on to something that is consistent among all these songs, and that is the beat. Most of us danced with the beat in the very beginning and beat somehow helped us to find the overall pace of the song so that we could dance with everybody else around us safely in a similar speed. And of course it also helped us to not step on our partner's feet um, because it's never fun to step on your partner's feet. Except, no, never. Then of course the beat will somehow fall in the background and you will start to hear other things. It's a little bit like that first friend that you made, you will have to ditch it at one point. <laughs> Let's not say ditch, but maybe you need to make other friends on your way so that you can actually get the whole idea about the music and those friends will be the other elements of the music like the melody and the, the texture, the dynamics and timbre and all that. You see, it takes time to see the larger picture. It takes time to be an experienced dancer. Expectedly, more you dance, better dancer that you become. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, uh, seriously. I mean, I, I, I have met some dancers in my past that they unfortunately started badly and then they practiced badly and then some of them, you know, mastered their bad dancing to perfection over the years. I could help you so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, I've done so much work for this song and many others and I'm happy to share with you so that you can benefit. Having said all this, I think it's a good idea now to look at the form of the song Poema. Here it is. That's it. That's the form of Poema. You have a good day and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye. All right. Just kidding. Let's get in. Let's see what's going on here. This was painted in Hawaii about 10 years ago. It's an acrylic paint on canvas. Song starts with a single melodic line. It's legato, buba, as we can say. Very uh, fragile, very um, flimsy, even very singular. This is what we call the theme of the song. If you listen to the melody carefully, you will intuitively feel there is a clear moment of a conclusion and that's the theme coming to the end. The section B, which creates a great contrast. It's very staccato, very kitty. Section B comes in two very symmetric parts. After this, we hear the first variation of the theme with the singer. Hmm. This is this is so good, we don't mind listening to it again. Oh, 
After hearing the singer over two large legato sections, staccato is coming back again with the section B. Let's call this B2. Notice each of these symmetric parts of the section B are descending. Quickly climbs in between so it can fall back again. And then the last time we hear the theme at the end, we will have a combination of legato and staccato here. Now that we know there is a nice composition in the song, so let's see how we could dance to it. First section of the song is very gentle, emotional. Let's not walk right away. Indeed, we can dance, but let's keep it small and subtle. Rather than walking on the ronda, let's use this time to connect with our partner in the embrace and a little in our legs as we are getting ready. While first section ends, try to face the line of the dance to get ready to walk. Do not miss the first step of this walk. Be decisive about it. Clearly different than before, so be sharp. Not only you, most other dancers will walk here. We are Gently elevated to the next level, A2. Presence of the singer should calm you down. I sometimes stop and give the spotlight to the singer, but at least stop walking on the ronda. This emotional, lyrical part is more for the woman to dance. Kalesita is a good vocabulary choice makes you stay and concentrate your attention on your partner. Notice using every other beat to take steps helps you to do less and you know less is more. Another section of legato, this is the third time we're hearing the theme, section B must be coming soon. I already feel during this section that these are my last moments to stay and indulge my attention to my partner. I gently exit from these turns and refresh our embrace to get back to my walk on the ronda. Here in this performance, I, I use back steps to rewind my walk in the center of the B section so I can make my entire walk symmetric, first half and the second half. Here we are getting into the next variation of the theme. Unlike the previous A sections, I hear the melodies are in dialogue with each other. Sounds like one comes to answer the other. This is where you can see us dancing less simultaneously, more like one and then the other, to be the part of this melodic conversation. Sound is rich and complex, so more complex vocabulary is useful. And finally the last variation comes. Loud. It's everyone in the orchestra using their last chance. It has both rhythmic and melodic parts. So you can walk or turn depending on what you were doing before. And if you are dancing the milonga depending on what the other people doing around you. 
combination of walk and turn is a good idea. However, when every couple do that, it can be a little chaotic for the line of the dance. We will get to fix that before the beginning of the next dance. It's not a race for us from point A to point B. It is the experience. And the quality of this experience will certainly depend on you and your partner and the connection that you have in between and the connection you have with the dancers around you. And I don't know if you notice how much the music plays a role here for our actions. Um, most of the dancers will walk in the same time and many dancers will have a pause in a very similar time. And then you'll choose to do your turns when the music suggests. Certainly at the end of the song, you will stop with everybody else. And then during the cortina, you will all walk out the dance floor and you will change partners and come back in the beginning of the next tanda. You see the music is playing a role that keeps all of us together. It's like an umbrella effect. And we all feel somewhat connected with each other. It's safer under this umbrella. Before we finish, I'd like to add a little spice into all this. Obviously, all these explanations will, will somehow help you to be more musical dancing to Poema. But it may, it may require a little more. And that's where maybe the story that we can create, uh, it could help us to put us into a particular and, and a special atmosphere. Let me try. Year 1935. And the music of tango always had a marching-like quality. And that, that makes me think Every time when I dance to the staccato section of the song, the section B, I feel like a soldier walking on a field, but the field that is muddy. And I have all this heavy equipment on me. I don't know what the soldiers wear, but I have my rifle and the radio and the things that makes me heavier. And of course, I walk along with my brothers the brothers in arms. And every step I take during this part of the music, I feel like my steps sink into the mud. I step much sharper. I step much more powerfully. I step much deeper into the ground. I am not gliding on the surface at this point. And um, this is the part of the music that I know I'm not alone. I'm part of a, I'm part of a squad here. We are doing something with all these other leaders, other, other men. And of course, um, shortly after, I will be hearing the legato section of the music. And that's where I feel like I, I, I made it. I, I'm, I'm finally at home where my, my lovely wife and my, my kids are waiting for me. And this is the part of the music that I really don't want to bring whatever I was doing before in the section B. This is the part of the music that I like to rest. I like to drop off all the stuff that I've been carrying. I like to relax. And I like to remind myself that this part of the music is more expressed by my partner. Therefore, it's like being at home in a cozy, loving place that is not about me demanding or asking or, or, or leading someone to do something for us. It's more like being part of something else because it's, it's lovely, it's lovely here. Of course, like every other good thing that comes in expiration, I know the, this section will end and then the next part of the music, the staccato will come back again. And I feel like I am up and out there. And again, I am running on the field. And this part of the music makes me really look ahead, makes me want to travel, makes me want to go. So having said all this, um, I guess mixing the two could be troublesome. 
can you imagine um, you walk in a time where the music suggests you to stay is where you will be probably walking into some uh, other couple space where they are intimate and they're cuddling and vice versa you don't want to be the guy who is uh, keeping looking at the picture of your home and your wife and your kids while you are supposed to be running out there on the field you know so you don't want to mix the two the last part of the song sometimes we call it the, the, the variation the last variation of the theme is where you hear the staccato and legato playing together somehow feels like a celebration it's where both the home the family and the soldiers are actually getting together and celebrating before everything finishes you might think this analogy is a strange one i, I can imagine um, but mind you 1935 in in 30s both the musicians and the, the music makers are to go through the world wars um, but if you have better uh, stories that you envision just go with that all i'm saying is it's not just the steps and it's not just the explanations and analysis of the music it's the attitude it's the feeling that is that is attached to it and that is there with you at all times all you need to do is to dig and find and put your mind into it i had a great time sharing with you i'm gonna do more of these subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so and share this video with your friends wait, 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 um, wait, wait, and of wait. course <clears throat> and consider supporting this channel with paypal and also check our patreon page we're looking forward to seeing you in the next video cheers